Good morning. It is another sunny, wonderful day here in Sydney. And today what I'm doing is putting in the underfloor tanks. So I'm going to have a grey water tank and a freshwater tank. My grey water tank is a 45 litre plastic tank. And my freshwater tank is an 85 litre big one. So I'm going to be mounting these underneath the van um, with brackets. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. The grey water tank is going to come on the passenger side and it's going to sit next to the fuel tank and the big tank is going to be on the other side underneath kind of right next to the exhaust so i'm going to have to make a little heat shield to stop this from getting too hot so today i'm actually at my dad's place um, he's a retired mechanic so he's got a full workshop of stuff i can use uh, i needed to come here to use his vice because i need to make some brackets for these so i need to whack some steel on a on a metal vice and i don't have that at, at the home so I'll show you his workshop and I think it's going to make it a lot easier. I've jacked the car up already, so I've got it onto jack stands so I can get under there better and I'll show you where I'm going to put them. Okay, so first of all, this is my grey water tank and it's going to sit right next to the fuel tank here on the passenger side. So it fits really nice and snug and what I'm going to do is just make some brackets very similar to the fuel tank brackets. I'm going to even attach it to those fuel tank nuts and then the other side will just attach onto the chassis here. And then I'll just have three straps like a U strap going up and I'll just screw it in with tech screws. And I'll do something similar on the other side but I've got to make it a bit more hearty for this tank because it's much heavier. So you can see where it's going to sit. I've just jacked it up temporarily just to hold it in place while I take some measurements. But it shouldn't be too hard actually. Um, this one will be the easy one. The other one's going to be a bit trickier. Okay, so I've finished making the brackets for the grey water and the fresh water tank. They've come out really well. I did make a small mistake where I didn't account for the height of the bolt that's going to screw up into the fresh water tank. Um, so I'll have to pack it with a couple of washers. I'll show you what I mean by that later. But while that paint's drying, I've just sprayed it um, black with some primer underneath. I'm going to make a heat shield for the fresh water tank. Because it will be sitting very close to the exhaust, I didn't want to have any kind of heat transfer going from the exhaust into the plastic water tank you can either melt it or heat the water up I'm sure it's no good so what I've actually done I've gone down to the local metal shop and I've picked up a scrap piece of aluminium so aluminium is a really good heat shield it's what they use on all the um, exhausts around here anyway because it uh, doesn't transfer heat it's like a heat sink um, this is one mil plate it cost me four dollars and I'm going to bend it into position so there's a physical barrier between the water tank and the exhaust pipe. So I'll show you what I mean by that. 
So here underneath the van, this is the driver's side, and this here is where my water tank will be sitting. And you can see the exhaust pipe is very close. What I'm gonna do is get my plate and attach it to the chassis of the van so there is a physical barrier between this exhaust pipe and my tank. So I'll see if I can just bend some aluminium plate and put some bolts into it. Okay, so here's my aluminium plate. Um, ideally, I could fold this with a metal folding machine, um, which uses magnets to hold this down, but because I don't actually have one of those, they're pretty specific to metal work. Um, I'm just gonna try and bash it with a hammer down this line and then try and yeah keep it straight. Um, the one thing I am worried about when this goes up, because it doesn't have any knurling. Knurling's when they put grooves throughout or a pattern, so it actually holds structure, um, stops it from waving and, and bending. So the only thing that I'm worried about is when I put it up, it's gonna wobble a lot. But I won't know until I do it, so I might just have to put some little support brackets in or something to stop it from wobbling around. So, yeah, first step, I'm just going to bend this down. A lot better than expected. This thin aluminium really just does bend very easily when you bash it. I use a, um, a soft rubber hammer just so I didn't dent and scratch it too bad. But, yeah, what I've done is I've put two... Uh, bends in it and it actually gives it a lot of rigidity so it's very stiff now um, so that's going to get bolted up there and I've just added this just to make it a bit more rigid and I think it's actually going to work really well so I'll put it up and see how it fits I might have to trim a little bit off but I'm pretty happy with that four dollar heat shield okay so here is installed the heat shield um, you can see there's a gap between the exhaust and the aluminium heat shield which is probably critical to make sure that um, it doesn't touch and transfer heat but yeah it's come out really well I'm very happy with it four dollars there we go so my tank is going to go next in here so before I install the tanks and it gets all a bit confusing under the van I'll just show you how I'm mounting these tanks with two different types of brackets that I've made so for the grey water tank, uh, it's a bit smaller and it's not as heavy. Obviously, it's only going to be 45 kilos when full, um, and it probably won't be full that often. So a little bit less heavy duty. But the way I'm doing it is I've just made the, a bracket that kind of fits the contours of the tank. This will connect to the original fuel tank bolt. And then I've drilled two holes here that will go... Um, tech screws come up from underneath and screw into the chassis and this kind of sits like this nice and snug if there's any uh, play in it what I'm going to do is put a bit of like um, yoga mat foam or something on the bottom here and maybe on the top just to really make it snug so it won't rattle around at all it's pretty hard to get brackets like you know 100% when you're just bashing it with a hammer the other bracket I've made for the freshwater tank is more of like a two-part bracket so you get this part and I've drilled five holes in it and that is going to bolt directly to the van uh, there's three kind of areas that I can bolt it onto that's just going to be with tech screws and then that kind of goes over the top like this and then I've got another flat piece which I haven't drilled the holes in yet because I want to put the first piece on the van first and that's going to sandwich like this and then there's going to be two bolts that hold that together um, and then it'll be nice and snug and the reason if I need to drop this water tank for whatever reason it's going to be a lot easier I only have to undo these um, six bolts and the whole thing will drop okay so this is how I've mounted my grey water tank you can see I've just tech screwed into the chassis here with two and then on the other side it goes up into the three bolts that hold the fuel tank in place so this is pretty secure it is a little bit bumpy so i will put some uh, foam under here just to stop it from vibrating but it's pretty solid at the moment pretty happy with that okay so this is how the freshwater tank is going to be mounted 
you see I've got the brackets just tech screwed into the uh, chassis and the, the problem I realize I'm gonna have is because I didn't account for the height of this bolt so I only measured from here down to here as the height of my tank so now I've got this bolt that's gonna stick out and probably poke the tank a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some foam up there which is gonna protect it but for the time being I found a washer that fits perfectly on top and it's going to spread out that weight distribution so it won't kind of damage the tank so I'll put that on all the on all the nuts um, as a quick fix and then I'll put the tank up so you can see what I had to do here is I had to make up some space so I put in a couple of washers on either of these because I made that mistake with the nut not taking that into account but it looks very good and it is very sturdy and there you can see it sitting next to the heat shield which is actually really I don't think that's gonna hold too much but yeah good clearance very happy good day's job so what I'm gonna do now is install the water filling point so directly under here is where the water tank sits there that I installed yesterday um, I'm gonna have a fixed filling point that's lockable from outside the van so I'm gonna have my water hoses running down here the fill going down and then uh, the up coming up the other way so I'm just gonna I just drilled a pilot hole just to make sure that that is directly where I want it um, I already knew it was in the vicinity but that's good to just poke a hole through just to make 100% sure that's where you want to drill and now I'm gonna go drill it out on the other side all right I've uh, marked my hole out on the outside here and I've wrapped my jigsaw in uh, masking tape to stop me scratching the, the van side. So what I'm just going to do now is drill a hole that's big enough to fit my jigsaw blade through. And I'll normally put that pretty close to the edge, not obviously higher than the size of the circle. And then I can just start my circle. It's going to be pretty tight, so I'll take it slowly. And um, yeah, it should come out nice and clean. All right, so that came out pretty well. What I've realized from experience as well, you always want to make the hole just a little bit bigger than um, what you're supposed to or what the size of it's going to fit. You never want to make it exact because it is way, way harder to take little trims off sheet metal um, with a jigsaw. It just starts vibrating like crazy and you'll never get it as clean as the first time around. So, yeah, don't be scared and just go a little bit bigger than what you think and you'll uh, thank me later. So this is the other side of my freshwater inlet on the other side of the car. So this is my freshwater input hose that goes down under the van into the freshwater tank and this is the breather hose. So that allows air to escape the tank when I'm filling up. Um, I do have this grey water hose that goes down into the van which will connect to the sink and the freshwater hose coming from my tank comes up here, goes into my 12 volt um, diaphragm pump. I went for a C-Flow. These things are 50 psi and they're really quiet. It's crazy. Not like the last van I had where it was a real shock. When the pump turned on, it's got a water filter, inline water filter built in, and that goes off into a T. The T goes off to the back of the van um, where it goes into my water heater and to where my outdoor shower is going to be. And it also tees off to come up to the sink which is going to be here so my water heater here has the inlet for the cold and the outlet for the hot that goes in so the hot will come back towards the sink and the other hot will go back towards the back of the van for the shower all right guys that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you got some use out of it please show your support by hitting the like button down below 
And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It'll really help this channel out. The next video will be coming out very shortly. It's gonna be about the water tank gauges. So that's something I'm really looking forward to about knowing exactly how much water, fresh and gray I have in the van. It's going to be a great luxury. If you have any questions, remember to leave them down below. I reply to all my comments. So until then, I will see you next time.